Hi, and welcome to another repaint video. I'm Hannah from Hoodles, and I have finally finished this Monopoly series. I've done the major tokens one can choose in Monopoly. The hat, the thimble, the boot, the battleship, the iron, the cannon, the wheelbarrow, and now the Scottish Terrier. Finally, I can take a huge group picture. It's incredibly satisfying to see them together, like the coolest gang ever. For some reason though, I forgot how to watercolor. Thankfully, I'm better at customizing, so feel free to ignore this atrocity. I used the cave club doll named Slate for this. Scottish Terriers are compact and sturdy with like short legs somehow, so I thought the sculpt was perfect for my humanoid dog. I heated the head with a blow dryer and tried to detach it, but it took its fair share of violence. Oh, just that. Most of that is so good. That's just really weird. Oh, what constant. Okay. I cut the hair close to the scalp and scrape it out with a flat screwdriver, then I make an incision and take out the rest. The hair is melted instead of glued, which, you know, it's nice. Then I rub off the paint with 100% acetone. He looks so mad without eyebrows, like, grrr. The human ears had to go, so what do customizers do with these? Save them in jars, throw them away, make haunted necklaces? I should make haunted necklaces. The incision got glued shut with super glue, making a mess that I had to clean up with a q-tip. Then I started sculpting the facial features with epoxy sculpt. It's mixed one to one by weight until it's a homogeneous color. Then I sculpt his nose bridge, making it flat and giving him a little dog nose. I made this in two sculpting sessions, curing in between. I went back to it and thought he needed more severe expressions, so... Uh, the second time I made him look angry. After sculpting the face I turned to the legs, I marked out where to cut and then I cut off the toes and the heel with my trusted Dremel. I did this the same way as I made the paws on Alba, the albino hedgehog. To make the clay stick better I made slashes, then I roughly sanded it before sculpting feet. First I made the soles and then the toes. I should probably have invested some time investigating my pupper's paws, but I'm okay with these looking cartoonish. Doesn't look half bad. I added some pads too, using a brush to give them some texture, then I let it all cure completely before buffing the surface with sandpaper, then airbrushing. Everything painted black will be covered in fur, so this is to make sure there are no weird patches. I'm going to call this pose the drying dog. After a coat of MSC, I start on the face up. Since the face will be fur covered, I only had to draw the eyes. I used watercolor pencils and pastels to make them as realistic as possible. So the whole eyelashes or no eyelashes never really became a problem. I did look at my dog and she has thicker lashes than me. Good for her. It's good for her. Here I'm shading with black pastels, it's been a while since I painted on a black background. It was harder than I remembered, probably because I'm not used to it. Then I painted gold inside the eyes with my Colero paints, then I added some eye shines before glossing them with Tamiya Gloss Varnish. I usually don't do this, but I needed the eyes to pop. Then he got some serious facial hair. I cut fur from far fur fabric and glued it straight on. First the long hair like on real Scottish Terrier, then I figured gluing the whole head would be madness, so I made a wig. I covered the head with cling foil and taped it with masking tape, then I marked the outlines and the seams. These are darts, so the wig ends up bowl shaped. Then I took it off, cut it and used one half as a pattern, ensuring the fur was the right way. I hand sewed the pieces together, making it this uh, weird helmet thing, then I turned it right side out and glued it onto the head. Maybe I could have just glued the pieces without sewing, but you know, better safe than sorry. I cut the fur on the head at 6mm and it looked so much better, then I glued the hair on the sides, added more fur to the rest of the face and finished it off with some flocking. At this point I started to feel like things would work out, I had some serious cases of not trusting the process. This is looking perfect though. Next are the ears. Coffee filters have an amazing texture, so I used a double layer of that. First I cut out a rough shape through both layers, winging it like everything else in life, and made a mirrored copy. Then I glued and airbrushed them, first with a reddish brown in the middle, then black on the back and sides. The airbrush gives it such a soft gradient, I love it. I folded the ears slightly at the end and hot glued them in place, then I added fur and flocking. I did mess with the shape after the doll was finished to make them less cat ear-like, and uh, since they're made of paper, it's rather easy to do. Making flocking, however, 
is not my favorite thing to do. I sharpened my scissors to make it easier, but it was still a pain. I can't find the comment right now, but someone recommended a nose hair trimmer for making flocking, and I am buying one in the future. In theory, it should indeed work. This is a cloth covered nozzle of a vacuum cleaner, perfect for flocking. I gave the feet some fluff before gluing hair, again from the same faux fur fabric as on the face. I started at the end and moved upward, letting it dry between layers. I was again tired of peeling glue from my fingers, hence the gloves. The hands were too human, so I added claws. To ensure that they don't fall off at the slightest breeze, I shall introduce you to a miniature medieval torture method. I was sticking wires underneath the nails. Seriously, this hurts so bad to look at. It helps a lot though. After adding small pieces of wire, I sculpted the claws with epoxy clay, then after curing, I sanded them and painted them black. To make the transition neater, I added a gradient with black pastels. I also added some shading and veins to make them more realistic. It's not a huge difference, but I like it. I finished it off with some Tamiya gloss varnish on the claws. Time to assemble the body parts! I made three incisions inside the neck hole, trimmed the sus looking neck peg and reattached the head. This doll is <laughs> ripped, it will work well with my character though. Next, I made clothes. The internet is not overflowing with cave club sewing patterns, especially not for males, so I made my own. I'll be able to share these patterns in the future, but until then, I will save them. It's the same as usual, cover the body with masking tape, mark, cut, add it to paper and transfer onto fabric. I used black cotton fabric, first I hemmed the neckline with fabric glue, then I hand sewed the sleeves and added a decorative band around the neck while watching Deadpool. You can see here that I added a fold at the wrist, which I did to make it fit better. Finally I sewed the sides and hemmed the bottom of the shirt on my sewing machine. Then I turned it right side out, added velcro and tried it on Terry. I honestly love making doll clothes nowadays, so I made a second better shirt in the end. Same principle though. Next I bought a book, I was searching for info on making a proper kilt, but all the info confused me and this book was recommended, and I love books, so that's how it is. I bought it and read it, and it was glorious, this book is everything. A couple of days later I went back to the project and started on the kilt for real. If someone had told me I would need my math skills for mini kilt making in the future, I might have been a better student. This book was like, by the end of this chapter you will have a finished kilt. That's encouraging. I made a little sketch before creating a pattern. I knew I would have to bend some rules since I made a miniature kilt for a non-realistic body, but I did my best. First I folded the pleats and sewed them. Then I took care not to make a flared skirt by ironing them straight like this. Behold the inevitable white cat hair. I tried it on him and yes, it did indeed look like something intended. So it's a good start. This was actually in the book to cut the backside of the pleats and then add in visible stitches, which made it a bit thinner and neater. I added tiny fake buckles and instead had velcro to close the kilt. Since the fabric is so light it tends to like ride up to his waist, so I added a piece of elastic to keep it in place. I used black fabric for two reasons, the Scottish terrier I had in mind was black and making a miniature kilt for the first time while considering a tartan pattern while making the pleats was... it was too much of a challenge. I did however buy some miniature fabric from Montana Dollhouse and I am glad I did, they are so pretty. The kilt and shirt were done and I decided to add a cloak with shiny black fabric and this blue green one on the inside. I used at least one complete lint remover on myself and the doll's clothes during this project. Cat hair everywhere. After turning it right side out I sewed a seam along the edges, then I used water and force to make it yield and lay neatly. The black fabric was misbehaving though. I inherited this bear thread from my grandmother and I tell you guys, if push comes to shove, I can strangle a moose with this thread. This time I used it to be able to tie the cloak. I did a double stitch in the middle of the back to prevent it from slipping out and well that was it. Then I added some green faux fur around the edge. Honestly I struggled with the details on this doll so this was when I started doing whatever came to mind. And what came to mind was a sword, a claymore to be precise, so I calculated the scale, made a pattern out of paper and 
and made the blade from a popsicle. First I gave it the base shape and then I sanded the edges with my Dremel while looking at it in profile. I switched to finer grain sandpaper then tried making the fuller in the middle. I made this weird toothpick paperclip contraption thingy and it worked nicely and there was sawdust everywhere. Next I added a tiny little toothpick piece before sculpting the handle. The handle will have small rings, so I cut this weird needle tube after baking. This is a claymore. I kind of low-key want to start a weapon collection. It looks gorgeous. Anyway, I used it as a reference picture. I sculpted a handle in three parts, first the base, then the details, and finally to add the tiny rings. Super tiny, tiny rings. To make them stick, I used female liquid, and trust me, I dropped this sword a couple of times already, and it still holds. This went into the oven, and then it was time for airbrushing with plate mail metal from the army painter. There we go. Next I made a scabbard by first covering the blade in paper and then gluing fall leather strips. I was winging this part, to be honest. I glued a metal piece on the shape and declared it finished. Then I added some silver flakes on the hilt, which was a questionable decision, since a real sword rarely is this sparkle sparkle, but you know, it looks pretty. The handle looked empty, so more fall leather was the solution, then I ended up with some bling bling, and it looks rather cute. It got a harness belt thing to attach around the waist, and there we go, like a glove. Before calling it a quits, I added tiny details like this ring and a chain around the neck. It's meant to look like a loose fitting chain collar. Then I trimmed the ears to make them smaller and less cattish, touched up the edges with a permanent marker, added some earrings, and added a little cut on the left one. You know, battle damage. I was really stuck on the details and I thought he needed some colors, so I added some random cords, beads and tiny cut feathers. Overall, I think it worked out nicely in the end. Then, as a final touch, I dirtied the coat with brown pastels to make it look worn. And there we go, finally! It's time to make a stand. This time I made the base by mixing clear resin with glow-in-the-dark powder. I wanted it to look a bit magical, you know? I binged out Lander while making this doll, so yeah, you'll notice. To remove dust particles in the mold, I use masking tape, then I pour the resin in. You can see that there are dust particles in the resin too, but those will float to the surface and I can remove them really easily with a toothpick. I also added some tiny pearls for some reason, don't remember why. Then I used my embossing tool to remove bubbles before eliminating dust. While that cures for 24 hours, I prepare the game board, I cut it out, seal the top with glue, then let that dry overnight and glue the board on the resin base. While that dries, I tried something new. I looked at some tutorials for like miniature rocks and I found this one that seemed promising. You mix some epoxy clay, like usual, and then combine that with Fimo clay until it looks marbled. So the greenish gray one here is epoxy and the gray is Fimo and you just kind of stock them onto each other. Continue until you get like this profile when cutting the piece and then bake the clay. The epoxy seemed to harden while baking it for some reason. I was a bit worried about the fumes so I kept out of the kitchen and open the windows, you never know, better safe than sorry. Then you take whatever tool you feel work best and break off the pieces. I was really impressed by the result and decided not to paint it since it looked so good anyway. Miniature boulders! Then I glued them onto the board and added some smaller pieces, some coffee grounds as dirt and some grass, and in the middle of it all I added the wire. This was not a linear process, I love making tiny landscapes. Gardening is not my thing, but gluing fake grass on plastic is definitely my cup of tea. I added some iridescent foil and tiny beads in the middle, just for fun, then mixed a clear resin and poured it on top. To keep it from collecting dust, I cover it, then I let it cure for 24 hours before demolding. I trim the edges and sand them a bit. Don't use a scissor for this, use an X-Acto knife, don't be like me. This is the result! Looks normal and nice, but when you turn off the lights, it really comes to life. 
I glued beads underneath as legs and then I added some tiny cardboard pieces because I loathe the clicking sound it did when putting it down. Finally, I bend the wire into a saddle shape. The stand is finished! So this is it, the series is finished, finally, and I've already started on the next one. I hope you've enjoyed watching these Monopoly dolls, I've loved making them, I have my favorites. The battleship and the wheelbarrow, probably because of the ocean and farmers themes, it feels bad. It's like having a favorite child, but I'm only human. There were so many possibilities with props and details and all, has anyone else got a favorite in this series? I'm really curious to know. Next up, if things go as planned, they rarely do, but I enjoy pretending that they will anyway. Next up will hopefully be your cup of tea, not saying more. So this is what I started with and this is the result, a little Scottish terrier warrior. I am actually quite happy with him, he looks so serious though. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you're having a lovely day or evening depending on when you're watching this. Until next time, bye!